Hello friends! Spellbreak is finally back from its vacation and we have an exciting set of games to show for you tonight. So, we have a four game set. It's gonna be Blaze Dragon. He's gonna be facing off against four players. He's gonna be fighting Ron, Nanyako, Misosai, and Kuroneko. So, this was a tournament set of games that happened in Hearts United a quite a couple of months ago, but nevertheless, it's actually a very impressive set of games. So, let's take let's take a look. So Blaze Dragon, first off, he's gonna be facing against Ron. As you can see from Blaze Dragon's deck, pretty pretty smart stuff from racing players. Um, is to bring a lot of defensive system cards. He's got two talismans, three coins, one hangeki, and really Raisin kind of needs that. Her tech is so short, and it takes such a long time for her to get off the ground. If she doesn't bring so many system cards, she can get locked into Oki's Ember for quite a while. And aside from that, it does look a little bit interesting. She's going to be bringing the, uh, the purple fields, and she can actually use that to um, expand her Oki Zema options by quite a bit because it allows her to um, it allows her to cover more distances um, that opponents might tech out at. Aside from that, looks pretty common. Looks fairly standard though. Ron, on the other hand, also bringing a lot of defensive cards because Raisin's Okizema can be pretty scary to deal with. So for that, he has two talismans and two coins. And aside from that, the most interesting thing that he's bringing is definitely the four Spear Blooms. And Spear Bloom is something that pretty much every Yu Yuko player would recommend that you bring against Raisin. Raisin has such a short ground tech that if you do the right setup off of Spear Bloom, you can actually get Raisin stuck into a bit of a loop. It's really difficult for her to escape and she can get crushed and really you can take entire rounds like that. So, should be exciting, let's jump in and see how this goes. So both of these players, very, very, probably some of the best players in the West, really. Um, Blaze Dragon, he's been playing since like 20, like 2012 or something like that. I think ron has been playing for a similar amount of time. And yeah, definitely both of them have been winners of multiple tournaments. And really, this is about as good as you can get as far as gameplay goes in the West. So as you can see, Sprinkle is on the clock here. And really, Blaze could use this to go into a couple of different options, like right there with the 236, it does a lot of ship damage if people block it in Sprinkle, like you saw right there. Ooh, and Ron actually getting caught out of his border escape. That's one of the, the best things that Blaze has going for him, is that his air pressure with Racing can be really difficult to escape in. We'll see, we'll take a look at why that is in a second here. So right there, as you can actually see, Blaze knew that Ron was gonna jump up and try to come down with the J2A, to get him out of the uh, to get him out of pressure, but Raisin's J8A is actually longer than uh, the J2A. It traded there because they basically mashed it on the same frame. But if Blaze were just a little bit earlier and a little bit further away, he would have been able to outrange it entirely. Ooh, and right there, that was actually a really good frame trap from Ron. If Yu Yuko does J8A close to the ground, she can cancel into 2A using the land cancel, and then right there, it's a frame trap, and you aren't actually able to mash out of it, even though it looks like it. But pretty solid round from Blaze overall. Took it pretty easily, I think, and a lot of that is just air pressure. He does a really good job of it. Good blocking there. Ooh, and Ron actually getting caught, and there he knows that 6-6-A can only be followed up by 2-3-6, like that right there. So as soon as Ron blocks it, he just jumps right out of the way. He knows that Blaze can't really continue pressure very well. Good 6-6-A to knock down Ron. That is air unblockable. And Blaze actually trying to fish with the J6-A. And that can be really important in this matchup. Because whenever you use J6-A against Yuiko, you can stuff her, J, um, her J2As, you can stuff her J5A. And you can actually prevent her from doing some bullet setups. Ooh, really good move there by Blaze. You see what he did there was he, he did a J6A right next to the ground, so that it made it seem like, hey, I blocked the J6A so now I can fly out of here. As soon as Ron started flying, Blaze goes up with the instant air J8A and catches him out of it. Ooh, and a good wake up J5A there by, uh, by Ron, knowing that Blaze is actually, ooh. And right there, exactly what I was talking about. That J6A in neutral can be so nasty from race and can really stop a can really stop a lot of the options that Yu Yuko traditionally does. So let's actually go ahead and jump into game two. We're gonna be doing uh, Kuro Neko now versus Blaze. All right, everybody, we're back on game two. It's gonna be Blaze Dragon versus Kuro Neko. 
So as you can see, Blaze did switch up his deck quite a bit. He got rid of a lot of defensive system cards, and I think it makes a lot of sense because Okizeme, um defense against Iku isn't anywhere near as bad as having to deal with Sphere of Lumon Yuyuko. So yeah, you can get rid of a couple of those defensive systems, and what he's actually bringing a lot more of is the default 2-2. Which is probably going to be a better choice for doing Okizeme against Iku, just because I think Iku has maybe the longest, if not tied for the longest, ground tech in the game. So if you're going to be trying to do the purple field against her, it's really not going to work out too well. Um, and you can also kind of use it in neutral as a way to confuse Iku on where she should J2A, uh, because you can pick either one of the double bodies um, to spawn as, but you probably shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that too much. It can get a little bit predictable. Kuroneko, on the other hand, is actually going to be bringing quite a few defensive systems, three coins, three hangekis, and even one weather sword, which can be used defensively because it has invincibility frames. And yeah, definitely very important to be bringing against Raisin, which is very scary Okizeme. Besides that, Delay Bolts and three Exodias is actually a lot of Exodias to be bringing, but pretty standard aside from that, so let's jump in and see how this goes. So one of the things that I think both characters really have to watch out for in this matchup is there, right there. J8A on Raisin is absolutely deadly, and Iku's J2A is really deadly for uh, for Raisin, just because of the range of both of them. Now, unlike other characters, for example, like, I don't know, if Mei Ling plays against Iku, she doesn't really have a direct answer to the J2A, but Raisin does in the form of J8A. And I think that's why you, if you watch this, when they're both in the air, they both kind of seem to respect each other whenever they're at that angle where both J8A and J2A can connect with each other. Um, I think as you'll see as a result of that, they do block a lot in the air. Um, and another thing there you could actually see, um, something that Kuroneko can't do as much in this matchup as Iku is um, use those sea bullets. Because even though Iku's sea bullets are really, really quick and can work as a snipe, they're actually paper thin. They get outdensed by just about anything. And Raisin has really dense V bullets. But yeah, there, I think Blaze got caught out of position a bit too much. He wasn't really able to push the momentum of his game plan. Um, he really just got tagged too much. Okay, good stuff there. And he resets the pressure. There, he actually expects the border escape and he follows up on it. And there, he does a J5B and then he does J44, which allows him to cancel very, very quickly into J8A. Um, Iku, or not Iku, Raisin's motion cancel out of her B bullets is extremely fast. So if you want to catch a border escape in the air, you can actually just throw out a B bullet and then instantly cancel into J8A if you have enough spirit, or if you have enough air dash left. There, that Exodia is going to be really hard to deal with. It's so dense that even though he knocked him out with it way over there, see right there, Blaze tries to graze out of it, and his orbs just get instantly crushed. I mean, that thing just, it drains your orbs so darn hard whenever you're actually trying to graze out of it. Ooh, and that's going to be a big confirm right there into Lunatic Blast. Ooh, and that's actually a neat little bit of tech there. You saw that Blaze actually did a 6-6-B across the screen, and you might ask yourself, well, why the hell would he do that? The opponent's nowhere near him. Turns out you can actually travel more quickly by doing that than you can just by jumping and running. So that's actually a little bit of tech that Blaze does just to get around whenever he knocks somebody out for Okizeme. Ooh, and there he actually did not finish the combo to wait and allow Kuroneko to tech. He knew that Kuroneko was in that kill range to where if he got one more combo, he'd be able to finish him off. But unfortunately, Kuroneko teched and decided to block, so Blaze did not get the reset. Ooh, and that's a big whiff there for Kuroneko. And... Ooh, this is gonna be difficult. Okay. No border escape on the J2A, although I think he probably could have gotten away with it. And yeah, right there you saw as I talked about those C bullets getting outdensed by B bullets and... You know, really in those kinds of situations, like you'll see the Kuroneko usually doesn't actually use C bullets whenever he's on the same horizontal, or no, on the same vertical field, the same vertical height as Blaze, and that's because he knows he'll get out then. So instead, he'll wait to be either above or below Blaze and kind of block him off into going into that uh, section above or below him by throwing out C bullets. But he usually won't challenge the, C the B bullets, you know, directly next to him. Ooh, and that's gonna be quite a bit of damage. Sprinkle, and yeah, he uses the 2-2 there, and it works pretty well for allowing him to follow up 
Uh, Iku's, Iku's really long ground tech. Ooh. Ooh, right there. Grayson is actually, she has one of the shortest crouches in the game, and it actually allows her to crouch right underneath um, Iku's 4A, which is a really great problem for a lot of Iku um, matchups. Okay, Typhoon is now on the clock. Blaze actually did not go for the full knockdown, so he could force Typhoon. But this is a problem, because right there, yeah, Exodia. And this is something that's brutal to deal with, but Blaze, what he actually does instead of getting crushed by trying to graze out, is he sets up the double 623. And 623 basically, in the default 623 at least, it invalidates bullets and makes it so that they stop having properties. So Blaze uses that, and it allows him to just get straight out of Exodia without getting all of his orbs crushed. Because if you get stuck by Exodia in the middle of Typhoon, you're basically going to be stuck there taking damage because you can't block. It's terrible. And right there, crazy crazy crush confirm into Lunatic Red Eyes, and that allows Blaze to take the game. So we're going to be moving on to game 3, and game 3 is going to be Nanyako playing against Blaze. Alright, here we have game 3. It's going to be Nanyako versus Blaze Dragon. Blaze Dragon really didn't switch out his deck too much for this game. I mean, he did switch out which defensive cards he's bringing out, but besides that, it's pretty similar, so we're not really going to go over his deck. Nanyako's deck, on the other hand, is pretty interesting. So, you see a lot of defensive system cards, four talismans, four hangekis, and you might tell yourself, oh, well obviously he's bringing that because Raisin has really strong Okizeme and he doesn't want to deal with that. Not quite. So, I've actually spoken with Nanyako about this before and he actually believes that he wants to get the knockdown no matter what. So, that's actually why he brings four hangekis, because if he blocks correctly, he can get a knockdown with a hangeki and then go into pressure from that. And same thing with a talisman, he can reset a situation and then set up a um, air tech catch off of a talisman hit. So it's actually just there to help him get knockdowns. Aside from that, you know, deck looks fairly standard. He does have four Gungnirs because he loves damage. Not too many DPs, only two of them. And yeah, looks fairly standard, one five card reversal. So let's jump in and see how, uh, see how Nanyako's crazy deck works out for him against Blaze. So I think one of the things that definitely Remelia has to watch out for in this matchup is that Remelia likes doing a lot of um, D6, you know, dashing forward to kind of get around and cross up the opponent, but Raisin has really good air unblockables. 6-6-A and far 5 a can definitely smack her right out of her dashes, and because of that, you know, I think Remelia has to be a little bit careful here. So good knockdown there by Nanyako, Sun Shower, ooh, and Blaze actually correctly blocks a 3A and dodges the J and dodges with a J2A there on the Hankeki. And there that was actually a really cool trick that you saw Blaze do. Oftentimes whenever you see Raisin jump up, you think she's gonna go down with a J2B. But what Blaze did instead was he jumped up then immediately went back down, knowing that Nanyako would think he was gonna go into a bullet and try to jump out of it, so right afterwards he just went down. Caught him with a regular, you know, melee attack, and got the knockdown off of it. Alright, so here Nanyako gets a good border escape. He tries to actually fly into the corner, probably to make, probably to make, um, to bait out a, um, like a 2A or something like that and stop it from actually working out. But Blaze continued flying, so it didn't work out. And something you can see, Blaze is throwing out a lot of preemptive J6As. And that's because Nanyaka's game plan in general is that he basically he plays kind of defensively in neutral as far as pressing buttons goes. Like he you won't see him throw out too many buttons like a crazy J2A out of nowhere, but he plays very aggressively with spacing, and he's always trying to cross you up so that once he gets the cross-up in spacing, then he follows up with something like a J2A and you know goes into tries to get the knockdown off that. And what Blaze actually does to stop that is that you see him throw out all those preemptive J6As. And something you can also see is that there, whenever Nanyako jumps around, Blaze is always jumping right in front of his face to block him from doing those cross-ups. And even if he gets a trade, he doesn't really he doesn't get the knockdown against Blaze. So that's the problem. He can't get the knockdowns he's looking for. And right there, you see that spacing that Blaze is doing? He follows him at the vertical height. And then gets the and then blocks off any cross-up attempts and you know attempts to get him into a bad spacing just entirely off of that. So I think that was um that was a pretty 
that was a pretty solid game plan from Blaze there. Not really much that Nanyako had there to counter it, so it was a pretty quick set. So we're gonna move on to the final game, which is gonna be Misosai versus Blaze. Alright everybody, here is our final game, Blaze Dragon versus Misosai. So Blaze Dragon's deck is actually literally exactly the same as his Nanyako deck, so he probably just brings that versus Romelia's. Now, Misosai on the other hand has a very interesting deck. Three weather cards, so you know he's watching his weather very carefully. And four DPs. So, I don't know. Misosai must really love to DP, or he must be really confident in his ability to do it, because four DPs is quite a lot to bring. And one of the best things that I think he's actually bringing is, I think it's called Chain Gang. I, I think that's the move. Um, but it's really, really, really good in this matchup, because for one, it works really well as an Okizema tool, because Romelia can set it up against uh, Raisin's really short ground tech, and if Raisin basically techs into it, then Romelia gets a lot of spirit damage against Raisin. And aside from that, it's actually usually pretty difficult for Romelia to fight against Raisin's B-Bullets in neutral, but Chain Gang can actually be used um, to snipe those B-Bullets, because they don't actually interact with the B-Bullets at all, until, you know, the delayed attack later, whenever it actually explodes and follows upwards. So, it both helps in neutral and Okizeme, so I'm a big fan of that. Aside from that, he does have Dracula Cradle, two reversals, and three Gungnirs. So, that's not too crazy, but everything else is pretty wild. Let's see how it works out. So, spoiler alert, I watched a little bit of this set before, and, uh... There's a lot about this set that I just don't understand. It honestly made me ask a lot of questions. So here, this is a bit of an interesting scenario. They were dancing around quite a bit, and... Okay, that's what... Did you see that? That's what really makes me ask a lot of questions. How did Misosai know instantly that Blaze was going to do, um, the 5B whenever he landed, and he buffered the 236C actually to follow up after it? I don't know if that was a reaction, or if he just saw it coming. And if he saw it coming, you know, based on prediction, I have to ask, why did he see that coming? Anyway, so that was, that was crazy. That was like some Super Saiyan shit. I I've never seen anything like it. Okay, so there, that's actually another bit of crazy tech. So he gets the wrong block on the, um, on the 236, and then he's actually a little bit plus enough to be able to back up after it. And then there, by backing up, he forces the whiff on Raisin 6A, and then punishes immediately with 2A. Crazy stuff, Miso Sai, I don't even know what to say. Alright, good combo there, gets the knockdown, and yeah, there he's gonna be going into Chain Gang, and he doesn't quite get the Okizeme on it, because Blaze Dragon jumps out, but it was definitely the right setup. Alright, Spring Haze, here Blaze has to be careful, Ramelia 623, or 236 actually, it can be really dangerous and graze out a lot of things. Alright, Chain Gang there, and there he actually does get it effectively, so you can see it took out about, what was that, like one and a half orbs? Pretty good. Alright, and there, Blaze Dragon with a knockdown, and there. That was actually another really intelligent strategy. Now, I might be reaching here, but he did the um, he did the DP at Mountain Vapor. Or not Mountain Vapor, the one before that, Tempest, I think. And I think the reason why he did that is because he was like, okay, so it's about to be... So it's Tempest right now, so if I do DP, I'm gonna... And it actually works, I'm gonna switch it into Typhoon by getting the hit and the wall bounce and the knockdown. But if I actually get hit, Blaze Dragon will, will might combo me enough and like wall bounce me to where I get Typhoon anyways, which is good for me because I have the HP lead. So because of that DP, he gets Typhoon and he wins the round off that, which is... Yo, I might be reaching there. You can tell me in the comments if I'm being fucking crazy, but I think that's why he did it. I couldn't think of another reason why he just straight up did DP without even thinking about it too hard. Alright, so here, Grayson's 236, really good option in Typhoon. It has a lot of hit stop if you can actually get the opponent to block it. Ooh, and there, Blaze really ballsy, actually going forward with a forward border escape after the 3A, which makes sense because Romelius typically know to block if they mess up and get a 3A right blocked, so Blaze just takes advantage of that to get some more momentum. Ooh, and a good 6-6-B there, or 6 6 I don't know, they look really similar on Raisin. Okay, ooh, and River Mist actually knocking him away from the combo there. Alright. And Blaze trying to do the same trick he did against Nanyako earlier, but 
Miso side just not falling for it. He tried to do the thing where he goes up and goes straight down to try to bait out a jump attempt, but Miso side's not taking the bait here. Alright, that should be a knockdown. And actually, maybe a reset. No, not quite. Alright, Scorching Sun, and... Okay, he gets the wrong block on 3A, which is good. So, Remelia's 3A can't be cancelled into anything else, really. So if you get the right block, you're you're stuck, basically. But if you get the wrong block, you're really fussed. And that's another thing I don't understand. I have no idea why Blaze did LRE there. I'd say, you know, maybe he did it to cycle Weather, but Weather was already on the clock, and... Maybe he didn't like his deck, but his deck was pretty good there, so I'm not actually sure why Blaze did that LRE. That might have been a misinput, which is really bad, because Misosai was able to burn his meter at the beginning of that round under Scorching Sun and do a lot of damage. Alright, yeah, that's... Right there, you can see that Misosai is using Chain Gang over and over to block Blaze from doing those 5Bs that help him win neutral so much. And, yeah, he actually tried to do it there again. And that's probably one of the things that's giving Blaze such a difficult time here, and it can be used as a combo tool as well. Almost killed Blaze, but not quite. Good J6A by Blaze. Ooh, and... See, that's another thing I don't understand. I don't know if that was supposed to be a fake cross-up, or if Blaze just messed up his Okizema attempt right there, but... Yeah, I mean, in general, crazy set, and I... You know, it left me with a lot more questions than answers, to be honest, so... Definitely, the other ones, you know, I, I more or less understood what was going on, but yeah, I mean, if you guys can shed any light on some of the things that happened in that in that game, please let me know in the comment sections, because that was fucking crazy. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed, and have a good night, or evening, or day, or morning, or whatever it is.